Grow Great is a city government leadership podcast with Lisa Norris and me, Randy Cantrell. Each week we share insights, experiences, and wisdom to help you and your leadership grow great. Our website is growgreat.com. Episode 2202, getting to know more about Lisa and Randy. All right, today we figured this is a get to know the host. So two two purposes here. One, the people that have been listening to this podcast for any length of time at all need to get to know who you are and the people who you're bringing into the show have no clue who I am. So there's that. So we're complete strangers to somebody. (laughs) That's right. So this is a, this is the pull the curtain back, pull the curtain back episode. And Lisa came up with some uh, talking points to, uh, help you guys figure out and get to know us better. I told Lisa, we've known each other for a few years now, and we recorded that last episode and you made mention about having worked at EDC. And I'm like, I I had no, had no clue, had no clue that you had that in the background. So that kind of, that kind of prompted today's show. So I'll let you take this conversation wherever you want to take it, Lisa. Well, it's fun to be here. Uh, it's fun to, for them to get to know us. And, uh, we have, we do have a lot of fun. Anytime we've interacted, there's a, usually a little bit of laughter and a little bit of challenge as far as making ourselves better. But I thought it'd be fun for them just to get to know a little bit about us. So they know we're human. So I have actually a teaching background. I've got an actual bachelor's degree to teach little kids, kindergarten through six elementary and I, I always laugh because when people they're like, what, how did you get into HR? And I said, well, you know what? Teaching children is a lot like teaching adults sometimes. <laughs> it's yes, still it how is. to play nice, how to share, you know, play nice in the, in the sandbox. And so anyway, I thought it'd be fun just to ask a few questions um, that, that will shed light on who we are so they can realize we're human. You know, it, if you look back when you were a kid and you saw your teacher in the store, the grocery store shopping, mm-hmm. you're like, oh my God, that's Mrs. Jones. And she's in the grocery store. <laughs> right. you know? she, right. Mom, she is getting food. Completely out of context. <laughs> yeah. so, well, who was it? There was a, you know, Robert, was it Fulgram? Something like that. Wrote a book called Everything I Learned in Kindergarten or Everything I, Everything I Needed to Know yeah. I Learned in Kindergarten. That's right. Kind of a thing. So yeah, there's a lot of truth to it. That's right. So I'll just kind of kick us off because I think it'll take us from when we were kids to current. So really, Randy, and I know some of your history, but what did you want to be when you grew up? And it probably was not an executive coach. No, hardly. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about that when you were a kid. Uh, Junior high and high school, I wanted to be a cartoonist. And uh, I just didn't know anybody. I, I, I wanted to be a cartoonist or I wanted to be a writer but I didn't know anybody that did either one of those things. So in junior high, I did, I did connect with the newspaper in the town we lived in. They happened to have a staff cartoonist. Now, granted, most of the stuff was kind of political, but I made contact and for a school project, my mom took me up there and I interviewed him and he had gone to art school with Charles Schultz peanuts fame. Yeah. And so he, I'm like, okay, well, I've met somebody who does what I aspired, I aspired to do, but it really, it, it, it didn't help. I drew cartoons through, <laughs> through high school and stuff. I did bulletin <laughs> boards for classes and stuff. So yeah, that's what I wanted to be. So that, that obviously did not work out very well. So what about you? what do you want to be? So I, I always, I did want to be a teacher from when I was little and pursued it, uh, in college. And I don't, you know, it's so funny because people that know me, they call me Dory just for the benefit of everybody, you know, that, that has short-term memory loss. So, so there is that. So if you're asking me to look backwards, I usually don't remember my poor husband has to follow me around going, here's your water. Here's your, here's your coffee. Here's your keys. Here's your, you know, he just and your sunglasses, me with a and your sunglasses are on your head. Your purse. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So, uh, but all that being said, when I went through college and I was set on being a teacher, that's what I wanted to do my whole life, graduated from college. And there was some kind of 
this is back in the night, I think 1990 is when I actually graduated. And there was like a strike or something of teachers. So they weren't, they weren't hiring anybody. And I'm, I'm like, okay, this is not good. <laughs> this, this is, I need a job because my parents expect me to make some money and get out of this house, you know? So, uh, and I got actually married uh, in, in college. So when I graduated, I was like, I need to do something. And uh, basically I had worked the summers at EDS where I eventually got hired full-time. I worked there every summer and every Christmas, you know, when I came home from college. And so they had said, Hey, if you don't get a, I told them I'm holding out. I feel confident by October, I'll have a job. And by now explain, October, to, explain to people that aren't in Texas and particularly yeah. people that aren't in DFW, wh wh what, e who EDS was at the time. <laughs> So EDS was a huge data processing firm. They did a lot back in the day with, um, like they did the, all the technology to score in the Olympics. Uh, you know, when you cross the line, they had all of that massive, they were global. I don't know. They had. And this was a Ross Perot founded company. Yes. My dad was actually like the 61st hire with really? Ross Perot. Yeah. Moved down from Nebraska, um, brought my mom here and that's, that's how little Lisa got here. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah. So he was like early hire and my dad was a programmer for EDS. And uh, anyway, so I work there, but it's a big technology firm. I worked in the benefits section. So I did benefits on a part-time basis. And um, three. So that was that, your first taste of HR type stuff? Ish. I didn't even know what HR was. Right. I went right. to full learning literature and, you know, right. the giving tree and yeah. <laughs> you know, all the books mm -hmm. that we, good night moon. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. didn't know anything about HR, what that was, but they said, Hey, if you don't get your teaching job by October, we want to hire you full time. And that's all she wrote. I got into benefits. And then it was so huge that like, for instance, those of you familiar with benefits in your life, life insurance was one department. Long-term disability was one department. Medical was a department. And to move an EDS, you had to stay in that department 18 months. So I was thinking, you know, just like kind of like millennials are today. I was like, there's no way I'm going to spend seven years learning each department. Where can I go and get all that knowledge in one place? <laughs> and the city of Carrollton, where we lived, had an opening as an HR analyst. Um, and so I went ahead and applied for that. And that's how I told them I know a little bit about these things, but don't know anything about these. And they were willing to grow me. And I started my career in city government, uh, moved, was at EDS four years, and then moved over to city of Carrollton in 1994. I stayed there two years. And then that's all she wrote. All of a sudden I fell in love with helping people. And literally it is very much the same uh, education. You teach, you're taught to speak, create curriculums, you know, yeah. help, help the students learn ways to teach them. You have to do all those same things as an adult to, to help people become the best they can be, just like you're helping students become the best they can be. So it's really actually quite similar. Serendipity. There you go. It's happened. It's happened to us all. That's right. So you get the next question, anything you want. Uh, well, let's see, you know, you kind of, you, you've kind of already answered how we, how we got here. Um, my audience knows, you know, my story, I started out as a hi-fi sales guy. Uh, Rhonda and I got married in college as well. Uh, lived in married housing at LSU across from Tiger Stadium. LSU, that, that was I didn't our, remember that. I that should was have. Our, that was our, yeah. I, 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 I should have it. looked at your resume a little no, bit No, Well, I tell everybody, it, it, Randy Newman, Randy Newman had a lyric <laughs> in a song, you know, good old boys from LSU went in dumb, came out dumb too. So, <laughs> so there's, there's that. Well, we're was, Florida Gator fans, so well, that's a rivalry to oh, big time. <laughs> for the record books. Oh, yeah, big time, <laughs> big time. At least it's SEC. There you go. So True. there's that. But <laughs> stumbled into stumbled into consumer electronics because I was I, I was a hi-fi nerd. You know, I was an audiophile, and I loved, I loved music, and I loved the sound systems that would play the music, play my records. So stumbled into that you know, fast forward and, and I got, I got my first leadership, real serious number one leadership role. I was about 25, but I started when I was 15. So the value of an early start, you don't have to be <laughs> world-class, but if you've got 10 years in, by the time you're 25, it, it helps. So there's that. All right. Hobbies. Hobbies. Well, 
everybody on my staff can tell you what they are, but I, while I look, look like a professional, at least I hope I look like one, <laughs> my hobby, I love fishing and hunting, uh, anything basically outdoors. Um, so it's funny if I, I wish I could have found the picture for you, but, um, I had a great relationship with Tom Hart, our former city manager. And, uh, and he's a, if any, everybody that knows him in city government knows that he's just a genuine guy. And when I'd go hunting, he would just laugh. He's like, man, I hope Bambi runs faster than your gun. <laughs> and I'm like, I can guarantee you he does not, <laughs> but I would send him at, you know, cause we have to be in the blind at five in the morning. And I'd send him a picture with me all in camo. All you can see are that, you know, my blue <laughs> eyes peering through <laughs> with no makeup. And I'd say, me hunting, you working. <laughs> and he would always get a kick out of that. And then there was, and then there was one time I told him, I said, you know, you always need pictures for the banquet. So here's what, just remember when we're doing discipline, I'm really good with a weapon. <laughs> and I laughed at him and I sent him, I had, I had a, my dear knife in my mouth and my, <laughs> my streaks on my face. And he's like, like a warrior. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, man, we are not going to mess with you. And it's Don around. And I was like, Don is busy right now. Don is her husband. Okay. Yes. So now have you always been, have you always been into this outdoor stuff? Always into fishing. My grandpa taught me, my dad and mom were not outdoorsy at all, but my okay. grandpa, he, they were up in um, Nebraska and he would take me to the Black Hills I think mm -hmm. it's South Dakota. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Um, and he, he would take me fishing and we fished for Northern Pike and, um, walleye. Uh, and then I had the best time in a little canoe with my cousins going where it's a foot deep and you drop the worm in right. and all the brim, just, you can see him and you're just right. like, please bite my, please bite my line. <laughs> you know, yeah. as a little kid, that's fascinating. You yeah. think you're the biggest fisherman in the world. And so anyway, but I love fishing, but Don introduced me to hunting. He had gone um, for years in our marriage and he kept going, babe, you love the outdoors so much. Why don't you just come hunting with me? I'm like, oh, I love animals. I'm not sure. And he goes, he go, and, and he put it in perspective. He's like, you know, some people are really against it and I get that, right? But he's like, you, you harvest them for purpose and you don't waste. And many times you can donate them in the county for the hungry. Right. Um, and so we've done that too, where we hunt. And, um, but he, he kind of taught me the value of bringing food. It's kind of, it's kind of the theory of farm to table, mm -hmm. you know, bring your food, you, you, you harvested it, you processed it and bring it to the table. And so I learned to get enjoyment out of that. And honestly, it's being out in nature for Don and I, we were in, I'm in a high stress job. He just retired for those of you, when I say he did, or it passed tense, but he was in a high stress production environment for 26 years, audits every week, several yeah. audits a week, you know? So anyway, so it's, I think it's pressing just deadlines and the whole, yeah, bit. it's mm -hmm. just being out there and quiet at your pace and your time. And if we don't want to hunt, we don't have to, and we sit yep. by the fire and have good mm -hmm. fellowship with our friends, with each yep. other, with no stressors. I think that's what I honestly love most. And so when we take vacations, I'm simple. I'm like, let's go rent a house with a lake and some land. Yeah. And do nothing if we don't want to. <laughs> right. right. Throw a so worm. There you go. So water. that was a long story to a sh very short question. How about your yeah. hobbies? Yeah. Uh, you know, podcasting. It's I you're mean, good at it. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> uh, I, I really don't, uh, you know, between podcasting and writing my, my hobby, I have a sing, I really have a singular other than reading, I have a singular hobby and it's another podcast. It, and I'll, I'll hawk it. I'll shame, I'll shamelessly promote it. Leaning toward wisdom, leaning toward wisdom.com. And I started that podcast. I was about 42. Um, I'll turn 65 tomorrow. So I'm old. So I started this, the kids were middle school, junior high, fixing to go into high school. And I thought, you know, how cool would it be if I don't know why I got to think about grand, my great grandfathers who I really, I didn't know. And I thought, you know, we've got this technology with this internet thing and stuff. I mean, if you could click play and, and hear your great grandparents just riff about something, I mean, who wouldn't do that? Yeah. Exactly. So I thought, 
well, I'm just going to start documenting stuff, you know, and I didn't expect anybody to listen. I was really just doing it as a legacy project, but that really, that's got to be number one as far as the hobby, the hobby stuff. Now I like, I'm like, I'm like you. I like, I like being out. I like being out in the woods. I like hiking. I don't fish. I don't hunt, but I can, yeah, I could, I can walk trails from now till the cows come home. We both like Arkansas. We yeah, hunt in Arkansas that. and you and you go to Arkansas. We learned that as we had no idea. Now we're yeah. in different parts of Arkansas, but we both that's where we kind of go. Yeah. That's our Well, retreat. I started a started a podcast about the place. You know, I liked yeah. it so much. So yeah, being being out in the trees. I'm a tree I'm a tree person. Yeah. Just nature. Tree. There's just something that yeah. brings peace about that. You know. Now you have to tell them a little bit because I know everybody can see behind you. And you've got this collection of many things. And I love yeah, the your, grand the grandkids. You have to tell them about the dragon. Well, <laughs> yeah, the grandkids, the grandkids just they fondle everything in here. It's a it's a good it's a it's a good space for. So I'm in Hot Springs Village. Hot Springs Village is like my one of my favorite places on the planet. So we go into Hot Springs, which is about twenty minutes away, thirty minutes away, and we're in this like antique place, and the, the guy's got a just a slew of old toys. And for those that aren't watching, he's yeah, holding so up this, this is red a, I'm holding yellow up, dragon. It, you know, it's, technically it's orange. Oh, it's, is it orange? It's, okay. Yeah, it's orange. And, and, uh, I didn't even know, I knew it took batteries and stuff, but I didn't know it worked. And so I told Rhonda, I said, that's kind of cool. So there's a old guy sitting there. She said, well, what, what, what would you take for that? And he said, $7. And I'm thinking, Offering five, you know, <laughs> the business guy. I mean, she says, okay. So he sets it on the table and he hits the button. Oh, I don't have it turned. Oh, on. no. Okay. <laughs> I so love it. The, the dragon's kinda, roaring and flapping yeah. its wings. <laughs> oh, now it's walking. <laughs> his feet, his feet move, his wings flap. He opens his mouth. You can hear it. You know, he makes these. Anyway, it's, uh, I just love all your collection of things. Yeah. For this. <laughs> well, the grandkids, the grandkids, the grandkids do too. So yeah, I like this kind of stuff. I've got yeah. Tweedledee and Tweed Tweedledee and Tweedledum above my head here. They're the most expensive things in here because Rhonda got those and, um, they're collectibles and they're, uh, they're pretty high dollar. Everything else is stupid cheap in here, but the kids, yeah, the kids, the kids love it. All right, let's let's talk about okay. bucket list, where we're at in life. I'm clearly further up the trail than you are, but you know, you're you're not all that far behind me. No. You know? I, I mean, we're not we're not we're not kids anymore. You know, right. we're not we're not at the early stage of our career. We're not at that stage where it's like, well, okay, what do I want to be when I grow up? I mean, we're past all that at least. So, now where are you? Well, you know, for me, it's it's a continuing journey. I'm, I'm, I've been in HR my whole life. I've been a director since 2006. So, and I love to learn and grow and stretch. I mean, it's just, I can't sit idle. I just can't, I just can't do that. And so I, I've been working with my leadership team and they're providing exposure for me to potentially become an ACM either here or elsewhere. We don't know when those opportunities present themselves, but love to stay in Grand Prairie. And they know that I love, this is like my home. Assistant uh, city manager for those of you that might be giving us a shot, but you're oh, not, completely, not completely in the, in the, <laughs> in the space. Yeah. But so assistant city manager, which is, is basically, you know, like you have a CEO in the, in the private world. Well, we have a city manager. That's the equivalent in our public sector world. And the uh, assistant city manager or deputy city managers are just beneath them. Uh, essentially, I think they call it in private sector, the C-suite, right? Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. So, and I typically just refer to them as number ones and number twos. There you go. You know, the number the one is, is the person, you know, at the top. The number yep. two is kind of second. Yeah. Second and so in command. I've been growing there, but a lot, you know, down the road, Don and I have been looking for property. That's been our lifelong goal. Once we started hunting to have that property that is our own, that we can manage and we've managed deer leases for others, but we want our own space, a, a nice pond, 
don't need a lot. Uh, we're looking, you know, we'd, we'd love to have more than 80 acres. We'd, our goal is 140 would be perfect uh, enough where you can bow and rifle hunt and then go out and fish and have some coffee on a, uh, fenced uh, porch that goes all the way wraparound porch yeah. is our kind of dream Yeah, and a fire pit out to the left and our, let our labs just have the run of the place. So that's really, that's really my goal, but there's not a, there's not a structure necessarily of time, but I'm getting there, you know, obviously I'm 54. You said you were in your sixties. So, um, still early in my career, but, um, hopefully we can get there. Don's retired. And so as we look for land, the goal is if he finds something, he can work it until such time we can get there and get permanent housing and all that. So that's kind of down the road. Also would love to tra travel to Italy. Um, that's on our list to go. And we've both wanted to do that, but there's just why, finances why, and time. Why, why Italy? Uh, we had some, uh, our missionary friends that married us mm -hmm. are, went there and they missionary there. We've heard everybody that's traveled has gone there and just talked about it. I don't know anything else about it. I've gone up to Nebraska and Kansas. That doesn't <laughs> say a lot. So Italy's probably fabulous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just, it's just something we wanted to do. And yeah. that's, that's just one of the places we want to go. Yeah. My co-host, my co-host in, uh, in, in another podcast, Dennis, who I've introduced you to Dennis is an Arkansas boy. He and his wife left this week and they are in Barcelona. They are in oh, Spain. There you go. Spain. Yeah. They yeah. had this, they had this trip planned for a long time and then COVID hit and disrupted everything. I'm the guy who won't be going to Italy or Spain. You aren't? No. no You're just going to keep going to Arkansas? Yeah. I don't. I, <laughs> My wife, Rhonda would travel. My wife would travel. Um, and me, not so much. I'm a homebody. I'm a homebody. You know, I'm thankful for the places that we've gone. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I enjoy them when we're there. It's the getting there and getting back home that I absolutely abhor. You know, I hate it. Okay. How long you and Don been married? We have been married going on 34 years in August. Long time. I'm, I'm, uh, blessed because we had, we have a great relationship. We we're one of those couples that just rarely fights. We it's easy. Marriage is easy. Uh, I try to, you know, we have three kids and I've tried to tell our kids that's the way it should be. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be. I mean, you're going to have moments like anybody, right. of course, but through trials, we are hand in hand. Um, so I, I'm really thankful. He's, he is truly my better half and has made me better. And that's the way it should be. Right. Yeah, well, I'm, 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 a, I'm the husband. I'm the husband in this relationship, so I have a little different perspective. But no, yeah. I agree. I agree with all of that. I mean, I'm being snarky. Well, we're just a decade ahead of you. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're 44 years in this. So we were, we were kids like you guys were when we got married, and yeah, here we are. So life is good. Five grandkids. You got how many grandkids? We got four. We've got a basically a five month old, a one, two, three. So they're just, we're going through a life change because my youngest son, who's a police officer and uh, my daughter-in-law, who was a teacher just told us about a month ago, they're moving to Ohio. We're in Texas. And that's, that was rough. That was mm -hmm. rough for, they call me Lily. They, that was rough for Lily. And Don just sent a text to Brandon as I'm sobbing on his shoulder, dude, you owe me one. I broke the news to her. <laughs> this is worth more than a lunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Way more than a lunch. So we don't mind them going. It's just, it wasn't expected, you know, yeah. uh, we just yeah. didn't expect it, but that's where her family is. She's got two little girls. Now he's a police officer gone. You know, obviously that job is demanding. Mm -hmm. And so they're making that move at the end of this month. So it's a little, uh, sad time in our lives, but also we want our kids to pursue what they what their dreams are and where they need to be in life. Everybody's yep. got to make choices. So that's right. Yeah. Well, and until you're a grandparent, you can't, there's no way you can understand it. Mm -hmm. You just can't, you know, the tie that grandparents and, and grandkids have is, uh, Hey, it's, it keeps us tethered here for oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. All right. You mentioned, you mentioned the goals for the next chapter in your life. You know, you'd yeah. like to have this property, you right. know, the, the professional pursuit. So what's your guilty pleasure? <laughs> You're going to laugh. No, I'm not. Okay. There's okay. Two. I probably am. <laughs> <laughs> there's two of them. 
I love my daughter and I, my daughter's Haley, she's 30. She actually works at another city in Texas as an HR director. We love getting together for a mom and daughter date. And we watch Lifetime movies and then pick like <laughs> these, they're horrible. If anybody's seen a Lifetime movie, they're like a C, maybe C plus acting. They're, they're very predictable. And we're always like, okay, who, who's before we, we go look at the titles and well, then give guess, us an example. I mean, cause oh, I don't like, even know what a lifetime movie it's would like, be. Oh my gosh. It's like, uh, kill thy neighbor or it's, you know, like the old mommy dearest type things. It's just oh, okay. these weird, these okay. weird scenarios and they're yeah. horrible acting. And it's, so we always pick who, Who's going to be the victim? Is it the sister, the brother, the niece? Is it the neighbor? Who oh, so y'all predict y'all predict the outcome <laughs> as it's going based on the title, based on oh, the okay. title, and then we see who's closest, and we owe somebody something like chips uh, from that, the so local is that taco why you, place. Is that why you? Is that why you watch them? Is that oh, why we, you? We'll binge watch them on a Saturday. Like we'll send Brian, her husband, to golf, and Don will just stay home because he knows that he is not having any part of that. How did this, how did this tradition get started? Oh, we just, I don't know. We're goofballs. <laughs> we just love these stupid movies. And so the, the other thing is I love a good, uh, like 48 hours on ID. The well, whole the problem is you can't, killing theme. You, yeah, but you can't rewatch those. That's the problem because no. you've already predicted it. So it's a one and done kind of a deal. It is, but they have a million of them. They're just, they're just horrible movies. Okay. Well, don't invite, don't invite Rhonda. If you're, if it's ID TV or any of that stuff, discovery ID or whatever that channel. Uh -huh. Yeah. She's we all love the that. time on oh, all the time. And forensic like, files is great to go to sleep. Most too. depressing it's thing. It's like this. He goes, and there was a death on 48th street. <laughs> you, know? you watch Lieutenant Kenda. Oh, I love, yeah. Homicide Hunter. Homicide Hunter, yeah. I, yeah. Love, I love him. Any of those good movies, it's always like, I always look at Don, because he watches the 48 Hours on ID with me, uh -huh. and it's, yeah. he'll look at me and he goes, I guarantee you there's going to be a life insurance policy coming up in here somewhere that somebody <laughs> right. changed, you know? Right, right, yeah. <laughs> so okay. it's always the life insurance policy or or the neighbor dumped the trash, knocked the trash can over yeah, or something. Right. Something That's good funny. happened. It's funny. It's okay. sad you that said, life circumstances. You said you like had that. two. What's the other one? Well, that was it. It was kind of the lifetime movies and the 48 hours on ID. Oh, I, can okay. binge, I can binge watch those all weekend without just getting up to it. Cause I, I better go to the bathroom or there's gonna be a problem, you know, <laughs> right. after drinking so much coffee. Right. 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 So you like to predict who did it. It's the, who uh -huh. did it uh -huh. kind of stuff. Isn't that dumb? But that's, it's, that's what we do. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. So how about you? Um, uh, you know, I, most people, when you think of a guilty pleasure, you think of something that, okay, you just soon people really not know. Right. I mean, in that, that's what I think about. Yeah. And I'm I kept an open trying book. to, everybody knows everything. Well, when I, and I only saw, I only saw this, I only saw this moments before we hit record. Um, I, I don't know what it, I don't know what it would be because I don't feel guilty about it. I don't it's, I the, don't, it's the guilty part. I mean, how guilty do you feel about, you don't feel that guilty about that. You know, I mean, I, I hear people I talk guess about, that's true. That's well, true. you hear people that they're into certain kind of music, but you know, they, and their guilty pleasures, you know, like listening to Britney Spears or something, you know, yeah. you're like, wait a minute, what? You know, I don't have, I kept, I guess to, I don't have any of that specifically. I always think of it something I just don't really want. People would think I'm weird if I share. <laughs> But yeah. maybe, that's, maybe well, that's not you that. Know. Maybe I didn't use the right term. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I I love cartoons. I love music. Yeah. Not, I don't feel guilty about. I, I, I don't feel guilty about much of any of it, to tell you. All right, well, Lo love. Go ahead. I was going to ask you. Yeah, go ahead. So Don and I are. We don't. We don't do a lot of them, but we every now and then we love a good prank. Do yep. you have any pranks you pulled on anybody at work or anything that you can talk about that won't get you in trouble? Yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't know that I ever went I, I don't know that I ever went too far. Uh, the one that comes to my mind is not one that I did, but it it's one that I w it was perpetrated on me. I was in high school and I had a really good friend who was considerably older than me that was a friend of the family. And he married a girl. He was engaged to a girl that we took in. She was living with us while she went to college. He was in college. I was like junior high, but he and I, we played a lot of table tennis, 
and we played a lot of tennis and he was just a good buddy. And there was a TV show. There was a dialing for dollars. I don't know if they ever had that where you grew up, but they had I've this, never heard of it, no. they had this TV show. It, it was a movie. They would have, they would play a movie at some point during the day. And during the commercials, they would have dialing for dollars and they would dial, they would just randomly call up somebody. And if that person was watching the show, there was a certain amount of money that they could win. And I can't remember the host. It was some local famous deal, right? It was just local, a dialing for dollars. Well, this buddy of mine, he called, he called me and he got me on the phone and convinced me that it was the dialing for dollars guy. <laughs> well, I didn't have a clue. I wasn't watching the stupid thing, but anyway, I was kicking myself because I, you know, I had this opportunity and at some point in the middle of the prank and I've completely bought in, I mean, I'm, I'm. <laughs> He's hooked me. You're like, thinking you were getting some dough. <laughs> well, no, I was lamenting the fact that I wasn't because I wasn't oh. watching the TV show. <laughs> and at some point he busted out laughing and I, I hollered at it. And the minute he laughed, I knew who it was. Anyway, I hung up the phone. I was mad for days. I was <laughs> mad for days, but it was the best prank that was ever, that was ever pulled on me. So that, that'd be my, my story. What about you? Mine was when I was at EDS, Don worked there too. So this, we were very young. Um, I think I was pregnant actually with Haley with our, with our, uh, oldest child. And we had a good friend there that always played pranks on everybody at work. And Don, I don't think if I'm not a prank person, like, I don't think of that in my head, like a criminal mind. I don't have the prank mind, <laughs> right? right? but Don does. And so he called, you know, I was very pregnant and Richard was our friend and his wife worked there as well. We were a couple, we kind of hung out. And he was very panicked that I was still working and very pregnant. And so Don's like, babe, I want you to pretend like you're going into labor and get the other girls to get, you know, go with you on this so that everybody, so it's believable. Right. And so long story short, I acted like I'm in labor and pregnant and walked by his desk. And I'm like, Richard, you, you got to call Don. And so Don was already, and so <laughs> Richard dialed Don back in the day and as soon as he called Don, Don's like, uh, this pizza hut, not going to help you. You know, I mean, he, and he was like, Lisa, you gave me the wrong, the wrong number. And then he'd call back and Don would do some, some other, I don't remember all the, he would ran through a couple and he's like, oh, you, no, Richard. And he's like, your, your wife's in labor. I don't know what to do. And, and he's like, yeah, just, just carry her downstairs. Just make sure her water doesn't break. You might want to throw her in the bed of your truck just because it's, you know, ruin your seats, you <laughs> throw know, her in the bed of your truck. Yeah. And he's like, I'm not throwing your wife in the bed. Of my he goes, well, it's your risk, dude. I already told her your truck. But yeah. He said, I already told her in our truck, she's got to ride in the back just to be safe. You know? So he's Richard is just horrified. Panic. And so we're going, yeah. Panicked. And we're going along with the whole thing. And finally Don's like, gotcha. And Richard's like, you S O B, you know? so it was it yeah. was pretty funny back in the day that was our best one and then they did all kinds of pranks on each other when we'd go camping and it was well just i'm sure continual. when the other person gets really mad like i did and like richard did uh you know and the guy that pranked me his name was richard uh <laughs> might be yeah. the same richard i don't know yeah, well i don't know i don't know okay let me throw you a curveball okay since the theme of this show is leadership yep a leader and i don't care you can harken back as far as you want to a leader that really made a meaningful difference for you. You got that any, one's, got that any one's e stories? Yeah, that was easy for me. There's, I, I can actually, uh, I'll give you two and I'll make them brief. First one was a leader that made a negative impact and lasting where I, uh, we won't name, we won't no, name this person. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> as but, much as we would like to. Yeah. But you know, it, it's a leader that, uh, did not actually lead well, didn't empower us, um, would not share wisdom at all, kept control of everything, but would throw stuff at you without giving you anything and then criticize you and discipline afterwards when you had no idea and it was always last minute. And so I learned a lot from that being very young. I was, gosh, I was probably 22. And I was like, you know, I, I don't want to be that leader. And the group came to me very young that group and, and as a team and said, we want you to do an intervention. Like we want to meet with the leader. Maybe they don't know what they're doing. 
to us because there was turnover. It was just, I was the longest tenured at two years. So uh, anyway, but you know, it was, it was a challenging time. And um, anyway, you learn a lot from even if you choose to, you can, there's still silver, silver linings, right. In every cloud. So Mm -hmm. I choose to grow from that and just learn. And we're still friends to this day, but I, I chose to learn from that in a different way to lead for me. Right. Right. That, that was the perspective of that. Learn how not to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second one was actually my first boss here. um, And I never mind mentioning him because he's amazing, but his name was Ben. And when he hired me, I had said, Hey, I do not have any risk. I do not have any class comp, but I'm your girl. I can learn. I'm smart. I can apply wisdom. I'm coachable. I just need somebody to give me the opportunity to lead because I know I can do it. And he gave me that chance and then put me, he, you always talk about curiosity, Randy. He'd always, he never really told me what to do. He'd say, Hey, I know you want to be this. There's an opportunity on a project. I'd like to put you on that. And I want you to handle it. And then let's talk about it weekly. And I'll give you guidance on what I see. You might, did you think about, could you have done different? He was just an amazing mentor um, and really learned a lot of my leadership skills from him because he was so calm in the storm. But I, he also let me go grow my own way. He didn't try to make me a version of him. He, he's like you. Um, he encouraged me to be better than I was and go, you always tell me, lean into yourself, lean into who you are and just really focus on that. And so from a, a director standpoint, I saw a great example of what a director looks like. For me, the, the, the most poignant story that I can tell, I'm 16 years old. I'm working after school and on Saturdays, I'm working a lot of hours. I'm selling hi-fi equipment. New store is going to open up in the mall, new mall. And I'm working at the main store. It's all hands on deck. It's a grand opening. This place, I worked in the hi-fi section. They also sold photography equipment. And customer walks in. He asks about some piece of camera gear. I know nothing about cameras. So I look across the store and I see the general manager. His name is Don, Don Stoffel. I take this customer over to Don and I said, Don, and this was an older gentleman. I'm 16. <clears throat> I said, this guy's looking for a Nikon XYZ. Don said, I'll be happy to help you. Off they go over to the camera department. I go on about my business sometime within the hour. I see across the store, Don makes eye contact with me and he does this and he's standing in front of the stock room door. And I'm thinking, uh, oh, I mean, I just, I know there's correction coming. I just don't know why. Even at 16. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) EQ is really good. Even at 16. (laughs) So he pulls me into the back room. He closes the door and he said, do you remember the customer that you brought up about the Nikon XYZ? And I said, yeah. And he looks at me very calmly and he said, Randy, our customers are gentlemen. They're not guys. And I did one of these, <laughs> right? Mentally, I'm like, well, duh, of course. You know, because I, br- I was brought up, man, it was sir and ma'am, and it was please and thank you. Yeah. I just, in the moment, it's a store full of people. And I came up and I said, this guy's looking for, and I should have said this gentleman is looking for, and I, I'm 65 now. I was 16. I have told that story more times than I can count, but there was the impact. Right. And that, that was it. That was the moment. And that's all he said. Right. And he had great confidence in me. I was a really good employee. I did a good job, but I'm like, yeah, he's right. You know, he's right. So that probably did shape, you know, my attitude about service and my attitude about leadership focusing on others, doing for them what they can't do for themselves. Don, Don Stoffel in that moment did for me what I couldn't, he saw something that I couldn't see. I didn't see it as a 16 year old, 
but I have seen it every day since, you know, so. And you're right. That's what leadership is all about. And, and we've taken time today, you know, where, where those watching us and those listening can hopefully learn a little bit about us and, and realize like the teacher I mentioned that we are human and, uh, we have varying backgrounds, but that's going to be our ultimate goal of this podcast is to help leaders lead better. Right. Uh, we've, we, we have this leadership recipe we'll talk about. We've got videos that support it. We've got the podcast that they can listen to. So lots of avenues just to give insight. Uh, I don't ever consider myself an expert, but if I can lend a little ex, a little insight and help another leader become a little bit better, doesn't matter. I'm in HR. That doesn't mean you have to be in HR, but I think we can provide some wisdom that can help. Any, any last thoughts? No, agreed. And I'm excited about the narrowness of the niche. I told you, you know, yeah, I stumbled into this. My audience already knows and, and the people that now are coming over here because of you, I was very blessed and fortunate to get an opportunity uh, to do some service for a city manager seven or so years ago. I fell in love with the sector. Right. So I'm really tickled to make this shift and really focus on this particular sector uh, because I, there's just, I'm not in it. I've never been in it other than kind of a person to serve the people that are in it, but it's just such a great crowd, I think. And it's a crowd that really resonated with me because of just probably the way I'm wired and the way that I view the world. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it and hope that we can add something to the leadership conversation that people in our audience are hopefully already having. I'm certain that they are, and we just hope to be able to add to that. So no, that's. Yeah. And I think they, I think all the guests are going to, we are going to have guests occasionally. Uh, like I said, this isn't just a, a show about HR or a show just about, you know, a specific type of leader, this is going to benefit. We'll have lots of different types of leaders we've experienced. I really only know this city and the one I worked at before. I've been here 25 years, 20, going on my 26th. I feel confident there's other cities out there just like we are, right? That are high culture, high value, high recognition of our employees and our communities and engagement. But hopefully we can lend uh, some wisdom that makes you even better out there. Thanks for watching and listening to Grow Great, the City Government Leadership Podcast. Our website is growgreat.com. For Lisa Norris, I'm Randy Cantrell. We hope you'll subscribe to the show and we hope you'll tell a friend.